السلام علیکم سعیدی علیکم السلام forgive me for my ignorance but is there any truth behind reincarnation علیکم السلام رحمت الله نه اینی تایم اینی تایم ا شیخ ا گاید ات دوز تایمز لایک سینتس اف دی دیسکرایب ریالیتیز and there's a, a living shaykh, a living guide, a living saint amongst the people who can see and hear when they describe a reality, they're inside that reality. And what's happened to many peoples and, and nations is once the pious from amongst them begins to lift from the earth and Allah doesn't replace because Allah want them to continue on with the messages and the prophecies that were coming at those times. And if they don't what they have becomes stale because Allah doesn't send a new because He wants one river to close and everyone to flow to the next river so that everyone's flowing to the ocean. But many don't accept and they stay within their own river and it dries up and they begin to teach each other but they're not from that level of knowledge. So it's not something that they witness and something that they understood and tasted. They didn't have ilm yaqeen, the knowledge of realities. They weren't trained in ayn yaqeen to have the, the vision of realities and the knowledge and the vision is what makes it to be haqq yaqeen, the knowledge of certainties and the truth of certainties. So when they say a truth is they witnessed it from all that they were taught through their muraqaba, through their heart and through their training, they witnessed that reality. So when somebody who's not from that tries to describe, oh yeah remember this, this one came and he described this and described that and then before you know it it became a recycling. That oh these, these people are come, they had to get recycled and then they reuse them because maybe at that time recycling was, was economically feasible in their village and they something of a point of reference from their understanding they try to explain a deep reality from the heavens and that's when everything goes wrong and then the people become misguided and and whatever then they propagate is continuous misguidance. So it lost its blessings, it lost its reality and then shaitan plays with it and, and makes it all sorts of stuff. For Allah there is no need to recycle. From whatever Allah brings out from the ocean of creation we have to know that nothing is ever diminished. So for our mind to even try to understand what the heart should be understanding, whatever Allah takes from creation is never as if He never took it. Whatever Allah gives from ocean of generosity as if He never gave it, it's never diminished, it doesn't take anything away from Allah So when Allah want to create there's no need to recycle, you just keep creating. So there's no need for recycling in, in this spiritual reality. Now trying to understand the world of light then that's the importance of, of taking the way of tafakkur and, and meditating, contemplating, trying to open the heart, trying to open the connection and bring yourself deeper into the world of light and then in your heart keep these understandings that what is this and how was that and what was the reality of that. And through the heart and through the training we begin to understand that you have a, a timed existence. So this is a, a skinny person because it's just this little stick. <laughs> this on this insan he's, has a timed existence. If he leaves this existence through his meditation and through his practices he has a soul and this soul can be trained to use all its force and begin to come out. As soon as his soul and his light comes out now he's in a timeless reality. So his body is time because it's diminishing and dying, his soul is timeless. 
then when he's training or she's training and to a timeless reality their soul is entering. They're entering into a world of light. So now imagine the when you operate from your soul in the world of light then all, all of this life and existence are just pages. And if they enter to the world of light which has no time they can go all the way back to the first page or if Allah allows they can go to the last page. They see Armageddon, they see all of these realities or they go to the first page and they see that when Allah was giving knowledges to Sayyidina Adam salam, these are just pages from the mulk, from the world of time. When they're timeless they can enter into any of these realities to learn to understand. Then when we understand even deeper that your soul and the immensity of the world of light means your molecule has existed for all of eternity. Where was it at the time of Sayyidina Adam? Just the molecule of your light was in existence. Where was it at the time of Sayyidina Adam? Where was it at the time of Sayyidina Sulaiman? Where was it in the time of Sayyidina Muhammad Awliyaullah teaching all the time that from the people of tariqah, the people of ishq and muhabbat of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad they have to know that their atom of their reality were all in the cave. In the, in the, the cave with Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq and that was the cave of all realities. When Allah took His beloved friend Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq on the hijrah and they entered into the cave and that's when we teach about the, uh, the second month, the reality of 18, uh, Ashab al-Kahf, the people of the cave, all of that and the reality of entering into the cave of that love. Every ashiqeen's molecule had to be inside that cave, witness what Prophet wanted to witness, be dressed by what Prophet wanted them to be dressed and that's enough. Just the molecule received it and it stored all of that reality and that's why part of it is the same as the whole of it. So. If one molecule is dressed by Prophet that goes back to your entire wujud and your entire being. So it means then your soul was fully loaded with all those realities. So then imagine and contemplate then when you come into your physical world at the time that Allah has destined for you to come into your physicality. If you break the confines and the boundary of your physicality and you're not lost to a physical life. And that's why Allah wants everyone to get their, 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 the bounty and all the reality that I gave you everything and you're just fascinated by the physicality. Then He inspires some to ascend, sit with them, learn from them, they'll teach you the manners that are required, the character that's required so that you can make an ascension. And then you're trained on this little bird within your heart has to be free. And that's why the bird is always singing and they are, that's what we uh, said the people of tafakkur, we gave that the night before. So in Surah Ali Imran 190 to 191 Allah describes these people that we are talking about because this is tafakkur, this is the people of contemplation. They contemplated and now they operate by their soul. Allah gives their criteria, they are the people of immense zikr, not just little bit zikr, just not somebody at the coffee shop says, no I, I mention Allah, when I say, Allahu Akbar I get ready for my salat, that's zikr of Allah. No, Allah's of zakirun, these people of zikr, they're making zikr standing, they're making zikr sitting and even in their lying and restful state they're in continuous zikr, that can't be salah. Because you, 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 that's not a, you don't go like that in praying. So it means these people their heart is in a continuous zikr of Allah a continuous state of love and ishq and as a result Allah opened for them sincerity and their soul, their little bird comes out. Because the bars on their cage of, of their, their desires has been weakened. And that's when we talked before also that's why the shaykh is giving you all these like scary videos and talks and sometimes the talks are Jalali 
and they sound tough and he sounds arrogant and why he's like that, he's so tough. And then other times they're Jamali because the Jalali they burn the cages. You know when something's a bit tough it's meant to break the cage down inside so that the bird can become free. Then the Jamali and beatific talks and emanation is to entice the bird to come out. And they begin to feel the tajalli, feel the ecstasy and feel that love and that state of love. But you have to burn the cage too, so the two work it in, at the same time. Jamali means majestic might which is usually sounds like punishment, sounds very tough, sounds very uh, authoritative and that's meant to break down these cages so the bird can become free. If the bird becomes free and the soul is moving into that ocean of reality, it experiences what Allah wants it to experience. So then these awliyaullah whom they operate through their soul, they can be many places at the same time. They're not reincarnated, it's the same creation. Allah can give them the power and authority to have many forms because the form is of no significance. We have a category of awliyaullah in Islam called budala means the changed ones, that they're continuously changing. They can appear in different places with a different image. And so the budala whom 40 of them their base is in Damascus. An imam of the budala was uh, Imam Shaykh Luhayfi, the one that there was an image very old. He would, his, Turban, his, uh, he wears the, like a kippah of a fabric over his head and would give water and teach hadith in the, in the masjid, Imam of the Budal. And there's 40 mihrabs in the association where they meet and they have their spiritual meeting, they give their orders and they're moving. Many of them don't even know that they're Budala. And many of them don't know what their soul and where it's appearing and where it's doing. But that's under Allah's command. If they reach to a state in which they know then Allah will give them an understanding of knowing. But the reality and the immensity of Islamic knowledge in these subjects it cannot be compared to anything. Everything else is like in the complete dark closet, Islam is, is the shining bright light of all realities. So these budala they're appearing all over the earth in different images, different forms, doing whatever Allah wants. So we have that in Islam and, and, and Prophet even mentioned the budala that don't speak bad about Damascus ever because they are a category of rijal called budala. Don't talk bad about the people in Iraq because there's nuqaba. So Prophet described these categories of awliyaullah and for that our understanding and the ta'leel that, no, no this exists and they're servants of Allah When Allah want to grant somebody servanthood and say, you are my servant, we've discussed in other talks, this is not something demeaning like you have in your house saying, I have a servant. When Allah gives servanthood to a servant means He's given them ancient knowledges. An abd they reach to Allah's ayn like the four holy companions, Sayyidina Abi Bakr which was Abdullah, Sayyidina Omar, Uthman and Ali. These are the four great ayns of Prophet and they carry immense Divinely realities and knowledge from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad When Allah want to grant a servant, He grants them this ayn, ancient knowledges. So with knowledge comes all power because how can there be a power if there's no ilm and knowledge and reality behind it. So no these are, these are immense realities. So Allah doesn't need to recycle anything, they appear as, as any form they want. And all our lives and travelling we came across many of them. <clears throat> you meet them and say, this is Shaykh so-and-so and has completely different image. 
and this is not something hard for them. This is, is the, the Allah asks, is your creation harder or the heavens and all of its majestic uh, lights and, and, and planets and stars and universes and galaxies? So and, and, and every moment my Lord is in a new tajalli. What does that mean? Somebody whom Allah has granted that I am your hearing. Is granting them a Divinely Lordly dress, I am your seeing, I am the hands in which you touch, the feet in which you walk, the mouth in which you, you speak, all of the faculties that Allah want to give in Hadith of Qudsi to the servant. And then Allah describing at every moment I'm in a new tajalli and in every moment I can make a new creation, new creation is continuously coming. So forever that servant goes they can become something new. So nothing nothing is hard for Allah and these realities are not through the head but they're through the heart. And the purest highest level of its understanding is through the tariqahs and Islam. But Islam now is, is something that's unknown to people and is empty. Because we are in the second jahiliyyah and the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi where Islam comes as something that is, is something foreign. People think they're practicing Islam and then the, the shaykhs talk about reality they say, what are you talking about? This is not Islam. It's actually the reverse, it's what you understand is incorrect and the depth of Islam is what they're teaching. That is ocean that has no limit, no right and no left, no forward and no back, it's immensity. InshaAllah. Can, can the shaykh please elaborate on the reality behind having connections to ancient locations and people? Alhamdulillah, I think we went into that, that was the whole concept is that when we operate from our, <coughs> our molecular level our light level, I don't know how people want to understand it, you know our atomic reality. So when we say light people say maybe it's hocus pocus, what are you talking about? So no our atoms, our atoms are our quantum, kuntum tuhibunullah, our, our quantum reality is the atoms. When we operate from our atoms then what is that reality that they don't understand and they can't see but yet it's there? All they see is a form that manifests but our atoms are right there and science knows them to be there. When you operate from your atoms then imagine what type of realities when they enter into a holy maqam, what is happening in the atoms of that maqam? If those shaykhs they reach their sainthood means they reach the heart of Prophet and they reach the Divinely Presence. So imagine then just the atomic reality of that soul that's in that grave is in the orbit of Prophet in the orbit of Allah Divinely Presence and you have it right there in front of you. Like a sun trying to capture the sun inside the sky and bring it down onto earth. The more powerful are their souls than the sun. The sun is only a manifestation of a reality. And that's, that's how it teaches you also how the sun is appearing. They still don't understand how the sun is appearing, right? Because they didn't understand what a black hole was. If you annihilate and you take a life in which to annihilate yourself and the annihilator for all creation, the maqam of the akhfa reality is the hand of and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Every Prophet is to perfect the creation to bring them all to the uh, one whom annihilates and brings them into the Divinely Presence of their reality. So Prophet is the reality of the black hole. Anyone whom approaches that reality Prophet will annihilate them, leave nothing for them. That's why his companions and his holy family are actually a physical example of that. That his grandson was annihilated on the physical desert of Karbala 
to show that this is not a family that is entitled but the family that lays the example. We stand forward and we go and we show by example of our own existence. Imam Hussain sacrifice is, is recognized throughout the world. The, how do you do that? How do you take yourself, your family, your children and you sacrifice yourself for your Lord's command? So that was a symbol of the, of the reality of annihilation. So when, when everything is going to be annihilated what happens if you reach to the fana? If you reach to the door of Prophet and it takes your wujud and says, I'm going to make you because you cannot be two in the presence but you're coming to be nothing. That's why in the abida, surma that these awliya are the surma of the Rosa Sharif. The dirt on the Rosa Sharif is the surma of their eyes. Why? Because they're, they're annihilated, annihilated, they have no form, how can anyone stand? When they enter into that presence they're begging Prophet let them to be annihilated, take away my entire existence to mean not to be in existence. Nasiyan Mansiya was Siddha Maryam, the blessed and holy Siddha Maryam Nasiyan, oh I wish I was something non-existent. Was it Nasiyan Mansiya? Mansiya Nansiya? Nansiya Mansiya? Nansiya Mansiya. That I wish I was something non-existence. What type of reality Sayyidina Maryam is teaching us and what these awliyaullah are reciting in all these knots and all of these, these, uh, these qissas is that they, they became nothing. And if they become nothing they become qashiyah like when Nabi Musa wanted to see Allah he saw Sayyidina Muhammad the great annihilator. As a result he became qashiyah powder. And he lost himself, his identity, his whole existence was completely annihilated. And as a result of the, the one whom annihilates for everything for Allah he brought him back from baqi. He brought him back into existence from the other side. He lost the reality of the physicality because once you're annihilated in the mulk Prophet will raise you in the Divinely light and Divinely presence and then you're from the people of Baqeed, the people of eternity, people of oceans of power. And that's why at that time Anna Awwal and Muslimin he took the shahada and then at that time accepted to be under the flag and the feet of Sayyidina Muhammad So means that if they don't understand the sun that how that sun is, is, is appearing? There must be a black hole up there that annihilates and as a result it brings out a najj. And Prophet annihilated all his holy companions and he then told us, all of them are stars. Any one of them you follow you'll be guided. And that's why if you study the levels of the heart that is the way of annihilation, how to be crushed, how to be tested, how to be nothing, how to be nothing. So that they bring us into the threshold of the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and say that to take away everything, take away our sins, mahi, that he destroy everything of, of manifestation and that's the reality of the Shaban that the, the month of Sayyidina Muhammad is that he dress us and bless us and bless us and the reality of, of the holy month of Ramadan is the crushing for Allah in Ramadan as a gift to the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad will completely annihilate all the servants. Whatever sins they have, whatever characters they have everything will be annihilated by the reality of Ramadan because it's not an action that you can achieve by your salah, by your zakah, by nothing. Allah is saying, I'm only giving this as a gift to Sayyidina Muhammad and the legal contract for this gift to come to you is that enter into Siyam because Siyam is a state in which in a legal contract Allah will give the reward without accountability. No intention needed, no accountability, everything else is contractual. 
If you say it was salah then there's the laws and the sharia because Allah won't go outside of the sharia of what He gave to Prophet So it can't be an usul to reach this reality, it can't be a salah to reach this, it can't be a zakah to reach this. So Allah said, for this reality to be given to your nation as a favour from My Divine the Presence, just tell them siyam. Because I will then give that no eye has seen, no ears have seen, no angel will know, no prophet will know. The siyam is a direct gift from Allah directly. Why? To give the gift to Sayyidina Muhammad and say, look your nation on, on this earth will always be observing Ramadan until the day of judgment. Every nation I ask them they stopped it. But I, I don't want your nation to stop it to show your greatness on the day of judgment that this is the Prophet, his nation that continuously fasted and as a result were rewarded with light and with blessings and the inner realities Allah will annihilate them and give them the ability now to enter in and make a complete hijrah because nine is the, is the destruction the destroyer of anything that is not Divine and that's why the nine is the one that annihilates and makes everything into a no, that's why it's the highest number. Anything that approaches the nine will actually be destroyed into nothing. That's why anything multiplied by nine it becomes nine. Nine times one is nine, nine times two eighteen, eight and one is nine. So anything that is now approaching that reality will be nothing. If it's nothing it's actually the reflection of the Divinely lights that Allah wants it to have. So the immensity of Ramadan is a gift for Sayyidina Muhammad to show his nation, to have his nation to shine, to have his nation to be blessed and to show all the other nations, look how this nation stays. On this earth 1.5 to 2 billion people will be fasting in the next 15 to 16 days. It's immense, immense gift for all creation to always see and be astonished at what is this Muhammadan nation. And that's, that's the a gift to Sayyidina Muhammad from Allah and because Prophet is the one whom annihilates all creation and brings them into the Divine the Presence of Allah inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Ya Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah uh, Can someone without training experience a bit of this timeless reality without understanding it and lose the seeing due to attraction of dunya? <coughs> Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Allah Zabajal can do whatever Allah wants. So the question, can? Most definitely. Allah is, is free to do whatever Allah wants. There are the rules and there's the exception. The rule is that we should train and be good and Allah will clean, grant sincerity and begin to open. But Allah attracts through many different realities and he gives a khash and gives a person to witness, to taste, to experience as a way in which to draw them to the reality. We said that if Nabi Musa was destined to meet with Allah in, in Bakka Valley wherever they were meeting at that time, if he was hot he wouldn't have been drawn to Allah's burning bush and the image of a burning bush because he was hot and look at a bush and I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not interested, I'm already hot. So Allah creates a condition, Ya Musabbibul Asbab, Ya Mufatih Abwab that He's going to create a condition for that servant and that condition has a door, that's why He's creating that condition. So many people had dreams of uh, Prophet being guided towards that reality, had visions, had an experience of light, uh, could hear creatures talking, uh, somebody went to the forest or the trees talking to them. Many of these different things 
that Allah give them an experience that there's something much, much, much greater than yourself. And it was not that you lost it but it was never given to you. It was just merely to entice you to come towards this path because it's not given to somebody. Allah knows that that person is not prepared to be given anything because if they give you that ability to hear and see and you've not been dressed, you've not been protected, every type of demon would be sort of ravaging you. Imagine how bad people are being attacked now by, by shayateen and they don't see them. You just feel itching, you feel attacked, you feel sick, you, you feel horrible. Now multiply that by a thousand, ten thousand if you could see them. If you could sit in your house and see all these things and then they're coming at you and now all your senses will also be working against you because now you see it you scream. You, you see them bite your leg and you start to yell and shout. So uh, everything about you would flip upside down. So. Allah one of the immense mercies just Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem that we don't understand how much Allah has saved us by veiling us. So these are not things anyone's ever lost because Allah doesn't let anyone lose anything but they were merely something to entice us and people would come towards that reality and, and to, to seek it. Now shaitan knows the same story that we're telling you, he knows the same talk. So he tries to gather his people through drugs and alcohol and all of his vices and he tries to because he doesn't have access to the heavens but he understands that there's certain chemicals that you can put onto a person and entice them to use and destroy these veils. And that's how he's operating because he doesn't have access to Allah but he wants to give spiritual people and say, come you know, come my way and you'll have all sorts of spiritual experiences. And he then introduces them to hallucinogenics, hallucinogenic, genics or genic, genic hallucinogens <laughs> yeah. and all sorts of materials, why? To pierce the veil. And then they start to see and feel and they say, oh my god I'm going into the Congo and Peru and I drink this thing and I saw heavens that was not heavens at all. You know that, that was a crazy bunch of spiritual beings that you don't even want to see the reality what they look like. But there's a you know magic show going on, it's like a child, you're acting like a child in a magic show thinking, look he's really cutting the guy's leg off, he's really doing these things with the cards, no he's not doing anything, it's all just an illusion. So shaitan is also trying to entice his audience to stay with him and smoke this, drink this, you know, do this, do that and then give them delusional and, and mental understandings. But the real way is towards the heavens in which Allah want to clean the servant, perfect the servant. And that which Allah opens for them is their training, their energy, the ability to defend themselves and that's why the strong connection with the shaykhs that you have to be strong with the shaykh, dedicated with the shaykh, you have to be loyal to the shaykh. That's why there's some people email that, oh we don't know about this dedication that you want and the, the loyalty and I love to bounce around to many different people and do this, do this, do this. You're free to do as whatever you like. But this way is not something you should be playing with. You should leave and go and be free to do whatever you like. But this way of opening your heart, taking this training to open your heart, to open your meditation, you are now in a big fight with devils. If you're not sure on who your shaykh is and that your shaykh knows you and you know your shaykh and you don't know how to keep your connection, you don't know how to who to listen to for your teachings, who, 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 who's the one who's going to be teaching you all these realities, then you can imagine the extent of the difficulty that you're opening upon yourself. That you want to now go to a hornet's nest of devils, hit it and then say, I don't know who, who my shaykh is, I'm, I'm listening to 20 different people, I don't know how to be protected, I don't know who's teaching me how to breathe, who's teaching me how to be connected, who am I connecting with? So all of this was meant not to say, oh this is your way is tough, no but this was the way of the turuqs. 
is that you go to a doctor's office and you say, you take this medicine, you, you take the treatment, you take all the practices that the doctor is giving, then the doctor can vouchsafe that, yes, this student is with me, this is what I've been training. I don't know what they're listening to, they shouldn't have mixed anything else with our training, they shouldn't have missed anything else with our awrads, our awrads that we're giving, they're from Sultan and Awliya and we haven't touched them, those are the awrads that they're giving. So they stand behind their awrad, if you add three other things into it, 20 other practices, you listen to this shaykh for one week, then you listen to another shaykh for two weeks and then you have you know all sorts of different difficulties and attacks, then you can understand why the system is then nobody knows who, who, who you're following and, and who you're listening to. That's why it's this because of the unseen world and the difficulties that are around. That's all they ask is listen to the teachings, follow the practices, here's the awrad, here's the app, here's this, here's the wudu, here's your taweez and keep your practices and keep your line of communication. You sit with somebody else and they tell you 10 other things and do like this and give here and go there and do this, then you're on your own. And it's not that the shaykh is being mean, it's just that we don't understand what you're doing anymore and you're mixing many different things. And then you're thinking, well, oh and then they emailed that, oh, I'm having this battle that is so difficult and I don't want to be with just this, I want to do like this and this. And that's exactly the danger that you're in now because you're not being consistent and loyal and, and, and istiqam and firm, shaitan now came in between and his wedging in between that don't follow, don't do it, don't do it. So then you cut off from this connection and that's you know that's your big danger. The fact that even shaitan is coming and whispering and inspiring you all of these waswases, it's not your mind thinking it's clever, it's that you're allowing waswas to enter and now shaitan bite your hand to let go of their rope. So that's, that's you know it's a system if you work it alhamdulillah. And if you want to enter into that realm of, of tafakkur and contemplation and, and how to open that, that reality, it requires that system and that's for your safety. You know, so hey, the bungee rope and say, well I don't know who put the vest on me and I don't know who put the chain on me and I don't know who's been checking this bungee. So you're about to jump but who, who's put this all on, on this person? So it can be difficult and that's the extent of you know all these difficulties that open. And we find that the most from the Southeast Asia, the Asian population, right? They've had 20 different shaykhs uh, all along the street of their home. I got taweez from this shaykh, I got du'a from this shaykh, my sister shaykh he gave me this, my grandma shaykh did this and Babaji shaykh did this and I got them all now here and they have the most problems. So how come with all these shaykhs they're not, they're not fa fantastic, you know floating and all their children you know floating and seeing the seven heavens. They are in the most amount of difficulty, why? Because they, they don't know who the shaykh is actually, they got 20 different mixtures, 20 different uh, soups that they're making and they don't know what soup they have. It's like you go to someone and say, what soup is this? I have no idea, who, who, what ingredients is in this? I don't know. Ten people told me to put different things in here. And that's the problem, become like a soup that nobody understands and that's why the family's in problem, the children are in problem and all their practices are all over the place. Shalom. Salaamu As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Does gossiping or listening to gossip drain our energy and lower our frequency? Walaykum As Salaam most definitely, that's, that's definite. That's Prophet uh, <coughs> command that the gossip uh, and backbiting and uh, if you're backbiting somebody and listening to the gossip it definitely is destroying the heart and pulling away all the spiritual energy of the person. <coughs> and if, and if, it's, if it's gossip means it's something real and you're talking about the faults of the person. Worse is if it's not real and you're hearing these stories from that person, now you're slandering and Allah will begin to punish the servants. The one hearing it, listening to it, partaking in it, it's like uh, being involved in narcotics and, and alcohol. Anyone selling it, trafficking it, uh, being involved in it are all sort of uh, under Allah's uh, 
nazar that it's not right because imagine you're, you're spreading something that's not true, it's not longer backbiting, that's actually slandering, you're destroying the character of that person. So definitely those things are dangerous and that's why Dajjal, his media now is only that and we have talks on that. The news is not the news anymore, there's not a single thing that the, the news is talking about. It's just every man coming up and just backbiting, backbiting, backbiting. So it's a completely backbiting program and then slandering all of it because most of it's not true what they say about the person they're talking about. And that's all shaitan wants is get everybody to be burned, 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 burned. That's the difficulty and the deceit in which we live in now. We live in, in the time of, the, of deceit. Has Shamash has an episode coming out when? When, when Lloyd and, and Shamash are coming out, it's tomorrow the, the episode? The deceit, the deceit, yeah, nice trailer. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> I so much like Alex Jones now. <laughs> Anyone doesn't like that that trailer, please contact Haji Shamash. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone likes it, then please contact Shaykh Nojan. Bas, inshaAllah, Allah will address you, bless you all inshaAllah and, and give us life to see tomorrow. Ila Sharif al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alayhi wa sahbihi kiram. Ulam al Shaykhina fi tariqat al Nashbandiyyatul Aliyya wa sayru wa saddatina wa siddiqin al Fatiha.